Hi, this is Amin, and in this video, I would like to talk about calculation of retry rate in Wi Fi or IEEE 802.11 retry rate calculation. And uh, the first question what's that? We know that in real world, for example, when someone is talking to you at the other side, you may cannot understand, cannot hear whatsoever for any reason. You politely will ask, I'll say, Oh, sir, I didn't catch that. Can you just repeat that again for me? This idea does exist in Wi-Fi and networking concept. How, you know, uh, by retrying, why? In order to have like a seamless, impeccable, and I mean, correct without corruption communications. However, this idea of having a flawless flow, uh, I mean, stream of data, it, uh, you know, causes some problems. For example, you're watching something on YouTube, uh, watching a video on Facebook, you are having an internet based like voice call, video call, and those uh, retries increase, increase, and increase, and increase. So, a, a part of your like process, your data, whatever, uh, will be devoted, will be allocated to that uh, concept of just messages. And this thing will cause buffering, uh, causes laggish uh, communication. How to how to calculate it? Uh, it and uh, what are like reasons of that? In this video, I'm gonna tell you. So stay tuned, guys. Okay, let's uh, start. This is the blog post that I've told you, and there is an introduction at the beginning. And here, our retry rate calculations. You can see. In general, whenever we would like to calculate efficiency of a system, uh, we just compare the amount of the number of failures to the whole amount of that thing. And here, the concept is the same. So we know that basically in Wi-Fi, we have a management frame, we have a data frame, and also we have control frame. But uh, management frames and uh, control frames are uh, unicast and, and or broadcast, I mean, both of them. But data frames are the frames which are unicast and they are better uh, for my concept to have better understanding, to have uh, like a more accurate and precise number. So for that reason, we just need to have the ratio of retried data rate frames to the all retried frames. How we should do that easily? First of all, what do we need? Uh, we need to know which channel we are using. Via this app, Wi-Fi Explorer Pro, what I did, I just opened the app. It was the page that I saw. Uh, this was the SSID that I was connected. So I realized, okay, I'm using channel 36 on five gigahertz. And these are the technologies that the router, the Wi-Fi router in the house is supporting. This is the one. So then I opened a cow capture. You can simply here choose whatever you want. But in our scenario, just this channel is enough for us. So I captured something and the result was a pickup, a Wireshark file. Then I opened Wireshark like this. It was the result that I wanted. What do we need? Some filters. What are those filters? I add them in the link, but if you want to know them, uh, there is another blog post. I will share them, share them over there. You can see them. We come here to statistics and IO graph. And here it will be the last result of whatever we've done. If you take a closer look at this, you'll see, look, this is the filter that uh, WLAN FC retry. It is the filter for, for the retries. And this one is for data frames. And also this is based on my phone or the user that I used, whatever, uh, MAC address. So I have all of them. I mean, look, this is all of the data frames related to my MAC address. And also I have all of the retries and the data frames related to my MAC address. And this is uh, what we've got. Greens are like the all, and these reds are the retried. Here is good, everything is good. Why? Because by the time that I was doing that, 
I was the only user that I was using. I mean, uh, when it is crowded or doing something, I mean, different times of the day, it will be different. But uh, apart from that, uh, just uh, let's go, let's come back to the blog post. Look, this is the first and this is the second filter that we are supposed to use it. Okay, because I forgot my MAC address, what it was. Again, let's see the iograph. So statistics, iograph, and look at this one. I think this one is enough for me. Yep, this is what I wanted. So I will copy that, close this one, and paste this one here. And hit on the enter. So let's wait. Look, uh, these are what the number of frames which are failed during what I was doing. And here in the flags, we can see retry frame is uh, retry, retry flag frame is being retransmitted is one. So it means uh, these uh, frames are retransmitted or are retries. How many 292? What if I just want to see all of my data frames? And all of them is this number 9787. So I know all of my data frames and also I know all of the data frames that they have retry flag. Let's come back to Google Chrome. So via this, I can put everything here and have the last result. And uh, yeah, this is the retry frame. At, uh, sorry, retry rate at that time for my phone. But uh, what are the uh, causes of that? Sorry, I know I'm covering the text, but uh, you have the link in the caption. So there are four reasons for that. The first one is roaming. It is for when that a user stubbornly sticks to one AP. It is the situation you are in a house, you have two APs, I mean, for example, and uh, as long as your phone is connected to one AP and you change your like location in the house, maybe floors, while you're having the good signal coverage from the other AP, your phone is still connected to the other one. So it will cause uh, some uh, miscommunications or uh, they cannot decode their messages and retry. The other one is power mismatch. It is for when, uh, when a Wi-Fi designer, when the operator, whoever, uh, the guy uh, will set the AP transmission power and maximum to have a vast coverage area. So in this situation, this is your AP, you are the user. As long as you are hearing from the user, you have Wi-Fi bars. You as a user do not have enough power to communicate to the AP. So it will cause power. Uh, we try and just power is much. The other one is interference, like the unavoidable thing. Uh, how we have non-Wi-Fi sources and also Wi-Fi sources like adjacent and co-channel interference in the houses we know about cordless phones, Bluetooth devices or microwave ovens or in big places like, you know, I mean, crowded like arenas, stadiums, shopping malls. So we have interference and those uh, co-channel and adjacent channel interference. And the last one is low signal level, like in a situation that's, uh, not gen i'm not saying something general but in a situation that like an office like like a big working area with many offices many rooms and uh, so in this situation you have one ap the amount of uh coverage is not like perfect it varies like a room to a room and uh, so due to having low signal level this thing will happen anyway guys I hope you enjoyed and uh, if you enjoyed, just don't forget to show me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Bye everyone.